everybody and welcome back to Art of La Carte and to lesson two in our new 101 series, Arting as a Job or how to do art as a job, one of those things. In this video, I want to discuss your workspace, where you create, and there are a ton of different places that you could use as a workspace. So most artists that I personally know have a studio in their home, whether they've designated a room to this, or maybe they have an outbuilding or the garage has been converted. They've turned this into a studio. But even further, some artists have to get pretty creative to create a workspace. So let me take you on a tour of my workspace, my studio. I did a studio tour a couple of years ago where I showed you where I create everything, but I want to show you what's behind the camera, something that I don't show in my videos very often. And that's this. The entire room is my room. It's my bedroom. It's the room that I have. I do everything here. I make the space work for me. So if you don't have a fancy place to create a studio or a separate room, just know I manage with a small corner of my bedroom to make my studio. I sacrifice a lot of things so that I can have this space. It's a little bit cramped, but cozy. So let me take you on a little bit more detailed tour of how I organize. <laughs> I use the word organize very lightly, but let me show you how I put together all of my art supplies and how I store them and how I have them about me. So the first thing let me mention is that I have two desks. So I have my computer desk and I have my art desk, which is actually a door. I've taken a door and taken the doorknob off of it and I have it sitting on these two like bookshelves. So that's my, my creative desk and it works amazing for me. I love it. Looking closer to the top of my desk, we move into the more creative tools that I use the very most. So first are my Prismacolor color pencils. And there are a lot of different ways that you can store them. I've tried several different ways myself, but this is the way that I find works the best. On top of them, I have a couple of different brands. I have my Intense color pencils and my Faber-Castell color pencils. I also use an electric pencil sharpener to sharpen my color pencils and I find it works amazing. Moving on to the Copic markers, I have a ton of questions about the case that I use. I actually built this case out of foam board. The first person I saw whoever did this was Bailey J. That's how she has her markers set up. And it's great because you can customize them however you want. Now you're gonna find I have little knickknacks and things all around my desk. These things change up with my mood. Sometimes I like little boxes of things and sometimes I clear my table completely off. It's an ebb and flow of tide of clutterness. So this here is my very extensive lighting and uh, tripod that I use for recording. So I have a simple lamp that I bought at Walmart. I attach a very small tripod arm to that holds the camera that I'm actually using to film right now so you can't see it. And then the lamp, because I have these slanted ceilings, my room is in the attic, I can face the lamp focusing on my ceilings. It diffuses the light and helps to get rid of those strong cast shadows. So now moving on to one of my favorite parts on my desk is my little art desk buddies. These are little things that I've collected and these also change too as I collect things. Right now I'm loving little Disney Tsum Tsums and other little knickknacks. So these are up here as well. Under here I have again another random little case. I thought these would work really good for my color pencils so I bought one case to try it out. Unfortunately, they are just a little bit too small to fit color pencils. You can kind of see I have some watercolor color pencils that one of you guys sent me. I have them in there and they're just a little too long. They don't like to shut. So I use it for my tape and other knickknacks because that's what I got. Moving over here, I have these little red cases inside our stickers, either ones that I've made or have purchased or that you guys have sent me. I like to put them on letters and packages that I send out in my Etsy orders. I also have a sheet of printable stickers that I made. I'm trying to work on getting my printing technique where I can actually make sticker sheets. And in this black case is where I keep all of the inks for my Copic markers. This next part of my desk is really cool. My mom gave me this little turntable called Lazy Susan. It's really, really big. So on this, I keep all of my jars full of pens and pencils and other knickknacks. In one of them, I have all my colored drawing pencils. So I have my cool erase and then my mechanical pencils. Plus I keep a collection of different gel pens here as well. 
I try to keep it neat and tidy, but they're always sneaking new guys in there. And then the second cup thing of stuff is all my ink pens that I do liner with. So lots of Copic multi-liners, some Prismacolor brush pens, and then the Sakura Microns, as well as a few other assorted random ink pens that I use for inking. This little jar used to once hold, I think, peanuts, and I just circled it up with some Olaf tape, and it has all of my drawing pencils in it. Then I have this little candle holder that no longer has a candle. Now it holds just random equipment that I'm using. So if I'm using certain pencils or markers in a drawing, I can keep them all in one area so they're not totally over my desk. In theory, that works. I also prefer to use cloth towels rather than paper towels for messes. That way I can clean up things or use my artist wipes. So quickly going through some of these things um, on the side counter. I have my glues, my tapes, some other pencils that I have in storage until I'm ready to use them. Over here I have some random lip glosses as well as some hand sanitizer. I find hand sanitizer really helps get sticky things clean. I have some mini blank sketchbooks, plus this cute little, I don't know, case thing that has erasers and various pencil sharpeners. I also have this really, really cute Totoro mug, and it's super cute, uh, but inside all it has is a bunch of tape refills for my tape dispenser, so that's exciting. Moving up one shelf higher, I have some business papers, my tape dispenser, a bunch of notes that I want to keep track of. I usually try to keep my camera here. This is, I use it for taking pictures of some of my artwork. I have my stapler and a very large collection of scissors. No one needs this many scissors, but I seem to love having scissors, plus tape. You're going to find tape everywhere. I really don't use that much tape. Over here, I have a bunch of different kinds of inks. Some are Indian inks, some are just regular dyes. I also have my color bursts. If any of these supplies are like, oh, I want to know more about them, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a little more talking about them. Over here, I have my collection of paintbrushes. I would love to say they're organized in some sort of really cool way, but they're not. They're just all thrown together. On top of this little bookshelf here is where my paints just like to live. So I always keep my little tray of watercolors plus some other Winsor Newton inks. I have my fine tech um, metallic paints and a few other knickknacks. So moving over from that, now we're going on to my computer desk, which I'm not going to go into too much on the setup for my computer side. If you want to see that, I have one video where I kind of show that, or I can do more of an updated video. But let's let's go splunking and dive down below my art desk. Amongst the knickknacks, I have my messy mat, plus I keep a couple of old folders where I, if I have art projects, like here's the Amelia story, I have the original script and all the artwork put in here. So I have these stashed under here, along with a few other sketchbooks. This is where I store a lot of my paper. I have my paper cutter that I use. All of it goes under here, plus a bunch of stuff that I don't need. You will also find that it should have been under here. I found it someplace else. My Parble light box, I have that goes right there. And then this thing right here, I want to show you this. This is a 12 by 12 storage container, and I use this to store some of my artwork. So on the bottom drawer, I have all my works in progress, the whip. So there's little pieces either that I'm still working on or little sketches I've done that might inspire me to want to create a future piece. So I have that in there. The second drawer up is my finished pieces or hopefully should be finished pieces. Um, yeah, they're just stuff full. I have too much art. And then the top drawer is remnants of paper. So if I take a nice sheet of paper and I cut it down, I throw the extras in here and I can use this for other things. This is some of the sticker paper that I have. Then moving up, I have my cardstock paper that I use, plus more random stickers because you guys know I love some stickers. And then again, because I'm such a cluttery person, just mounds of stuff. So I also collect little embroidery hoops. I like to use them if I need to make perfect circles and I need that size. And then last but not least is my Cameo Silhouette cutting machine, which I'm planning to do a video on that a little bit later. But that's it. This is my studio. I didn't go into the shipping and packing portion of my studio, which is over towards the other side. I'll do that, I think, probably in a later video during the series. So if you want to see more how I store my prints and how I store my packing supplies and what 
packing supplies I use to ship out my prints. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on this video or any other videos. So whether you have an entire building or an entire room dedicated or a corner or for a long time I had a TV tray. That's what I had. That was my studio was my TV tray. Whatever you got make it work for you. It's about you being comfortable and being able to access your art supplies. And if you have a dedicated workspace where you create art, I would love to see a picture of that. So if you want to take a picture of that and share it on social media, make sure to tag me in your photos, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram, share that around. Or if you have any ideas of how you store or things you use, Let's talk about that in the comment sections. Well, until next time, thank you guys for watching. And as always, God bless you guys. And we'll see you in another art video. Bye-bye.